Welcome, everyone, to the Sonoma Spiel. My name is Tim Zahner with the Sonoma Valley Visitors Bureau. It is crazy out there. We are all dancing to the diurnal swing, baby. There is so much. It's hot during the day. It's cool at night. Harvest is happening. The plaza is absolutely chock-a-block full of people. Tomorrow we have the Valley of the Moon Vintage Festival, our 950th annual or whatever the number's at. It's massive. It's, it's a big celebration, everything that's happening here. There's also a celebrity grape stomp that happens at 10 a.m. They are scraping the bottom of the proverbial barrel for celebrities because I have been called in as a last-minute team. I'll be with Mark from the chamber, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. The Botanical Gardens having a big soiree next week, and all sorts of madness is, is breaking out. Plus, we have new hats. We have these new Sonoma Valley wine hats that are available uh, at the Visitor Center. And uh, they're those cool, like, nifty uh, Bart Bridge hats that people all wear with, like, their little you know, trucker-style hats. And stuff is happening. There's so much happening going on right now. So we need to calm down. You know what calms you down, guys? A cat, the warm love of a puppy, maybe even maybe even a bunch of kittens just jumping on you and playfully, you know, nibbling at your toes or doing whatever kittens do. And for that, today I have a very special guest star. I know every week I say I, I have a very special guest star, but this time I actually, actually mean it. Very special guest star. It's Jody Purdom with Pets Lifeline. Hi, Jody. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm really good. Um, I was going to ask you about cat juggling. I'm going to save that for later. Okay. Because that <laughs> <laughs> from, from the jerk, the movie. Jody, what, what is Pets Lifeline? What is that? Pets Lifeline is Sonoma's only animal shelter um, yeah. established in, I think, 1982, early 80s. Um, okay. And the building, they, they moved into a building in 1987, so incorporated then and official. So Sonoma's only pet uh, shelter, rescue, mm -hmm. adoption yep. area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. And Jody, is it here in town, like nearby town? Where yep. Is it? It's on, we're on 8th Street East. Um, okay. Just head down the street and turn right, and we're there on the left. And when you pulled up, like your your van right now is just full of puppies and kittens, and you just drive around like the, the milkman delivering them? Is that what you do? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my own car, unfortunately. I did not bring any kittens and puppies with me today. Right. But you, but you guys do have... A mobile van, I've seen. We do. I and think at the farmer's market. Yes, yeah, so at the farmer's market, Friday farmer's market. Um, we don't bring it to the Tuesday farmer's market. They don't mad, allow mad pets. House. Yeah, it'd be a madhouse. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, and we bring it. This morning we were at Whole Foods. Right now we're alternating between Whole Foods on Fridays and the Friday farmer's market. So this morning um, we had the van at Whole Foods. You just roll up to the Whole Foods here on 2nd Street? Yeah. Yeah. Do they know that you're there? Yeah, they know we're oh, okay. there, and they've. Um, are you guys like in the produce aisle, or where are you guys? <laughs> no, at? we're in the parking lot. Oh, I got Because <laughs> the we have kittens in the van, so people can come out, and it just it, it's great. It raises awareness for Pets Lifeline because people see the van, right? And then people walking by can see kittens and I love talk this. about those. And um, Jody, how long have you been with Pets Lifeline? Just over a year. Now. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So just like a new kitten, you yes, are I the new, the new yeah. thing there. <laughs> um, and before that, were you in the pets world? No, but I've had pets my entire life. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I kind of prepped you for the, the gig here. To, it is. And I've, it. I've loosely been, my daughter volunteered for Pets Lifeline when she was um, an adolescent. Uh, she was a, a cat socializer, so she got to pet kitties. <laughs> and uh, they're very dear to us, our, our cat socializer volunteers. And Nancy King, our previous director, um, I just knew her for years. When I worked for the Sonoma Sun, I wrote stories about Pets Lifeline. Okay. Um, they helped me out with animals and mm. things over the years a got lot. So. Got it. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you knew about it. Okay, you said you used to work for the Sonoma Sun. Yep. How long ago was that? That was in 20, uh, probably 2012 to 2014. I don't know, 2014. I think I was 2010 to 2014. Okay. Um, Bill Hammett actually turned the paper over to myself and three other people at the time. Mm -hmm. Val Robichaud, who's um, passed away, right. being one of them, um, and my two other associates. And we ran it for quite a few years, which was okay. really, really fun. And I met a lot of great people in Sonoma through that. Do you recognize this desk? 
This was part of oh my prior. Gosh. That pri- might have been my desk. <laughs> <laughs> so some of this furniture came from back. Uh, that is so funny. Back in the day when it was tur- when when Bill was turning it over. Yeah. Oh, so hilarious. Some yeah. of this stuff was parted out. Yeah. Yes. And then it was three house multimedia. Correct. So yeah, TV, radio, newspaper, and I actually worked in all three of the okay, houses. Okay. So this yeah. is like your homecoming, really. <laughs> kind of. So thanks for giving me your desk. I should have carved really nice. my initials. You should have. There's still some gum underneath. Yeah. There, but, yeah. Um, Jody, are you from Sonoma originally? I am not. Where did you grow up? What are your formative up, years? Uh, I grew up in, I was born in Hawaii, so I've oh, wow. been a West Coaster okay. or Pacific um, Pacific Ocean person, but right. um, I grew up in New Jersey. Okay, you did. Yes, far cry from Hawaii. What That's was sure. Hawaii? Was, was, was your family military or something? No, or my dad worked for Lockheed, so he okay. worked okay. Um, in I, naval yeah. defense, but right. not... Um, not in the actual, but, yeah. but adjacent. And then mm-hmm. you moved to New Jersey, which I've been told has the best pizza in the East Coast. The best pizza. New Yorkers get mad. New Jerseyans are proud. Yes, and bagels. New Jersey. And bagels. Why yeah. is that? Uh, they say it's the water. I don't really know why. But right. the Do last you think time... the East River water is that good? I don't know. Like, does Newark has something special? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The bagels are great. The last time I came back, I brought back $75 worth of bagels. You did? I had an entire suitcase just for bagels. <laughs> It's a bagel smuggler. I know. You were so uh so this is true. Like East Coast people, they like even our sourdough style bagels. Yeah. No. No? No. Whoa. Look Not at the that. same. Yeah. Really? Not well, the same. What's something that California does better than New Jersey? Uh let's see. Well, certainly wine. That's true. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know that I've yeah. ever had wine from New Jersey. I actually I have and it's it's mediocre. The Secaucus Syrah is not that good. Ooh. Yeah. Um I don't know. Lots of stuff. Yeah. You know, okay. sourdough, certainly. Sourdough. When I, so when I moved back to New Jersey at one point, I moved back there for a couple of years, um, I took sourdough back there. So, you know, oh, you, good. Just, you come you come and go with the things that are the best. I love this. Yeah, yeah. You're like uh, the carbohydrate caravan person. <laughs> you're like, here we go. Yeah. I love that you brought the uh, the bagels. Um, okay. So then you moved out here and you've been out here for a while. Yeah. I moved out. I moved to California in 1989, right before the, um, the earthquake, Loma Prieta. Oh, great. Thanks for doing that. That was fun. Good job. And I was almost on the Bay Bridge. Were you? Um, I worked in Emeryville. Oh. We left early for the baseball game. Right. I paid the toll mm. after the earthquake. I did not get a receipt. Unfortunately, it would have been the greatest yeah, souvenir ever. Amazing. Approached the bridge, saw the brake lights ahead, and I'm like, you know, I'm new here. I'm right. green, but I'm not that green. <laughs> I know there's aftershocks. So, so what'd you do? I turned around, because you could. I, I got through the metering lights, and you could make a... Oh, so you weren't on the bridge yet? Not yet. <clears throat> So I thank God. Yeah, and so I made a huge U turn and I went back to the office and then I found out that there was a, a little hole in the bridge. A little, yeah, yeah. Like there was part of the bridge fell down. Yeah. It's perfectly fine now, everybody. <laughs> um, that would be amazing. Yeah, that's a, that's a good story. Yeah. Slash bad story. Emeryville yeah. had some damage. Emeryville's built on, um, you know, it's fill. Yeah. And old shell mound, mm-hmm. and when the mafia used to run it, I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff underneath there buried. So I'm I bet sure. you it kind of wobbled around a bit. It um, was a lot, and I was I was new, and I kind of looked around at the other people in their cars. First, I thought it was my old junker of a car giving right. out, <laughs> and then I looked around, and everyone else was just nonchalantly riding it out like it was yeah. no big deal. And I thought, you people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so well, look at that. So you got here, and then. Uh, yesterday, the A's played their last game in Oakland. I feel sad. So I feel like you might be the harbinger of doom here, Jody. <laughs> this is terrible. Don't blame it on me. You know what? Let's talk about something happier like puppies. Um, Pets Lifeline. Mm-hmm. You, you guys have an adoption thing. Yep. But you've recently helped Sonoma move towards something. Yes. Can we talk about that? So I did some um, – I put together an application. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the – it's the Mars Pet Foundation. They have a program called Better Cities for Pets. Mars. I believe it's the Mars Candy family, the but family. this okay. is I, be, I believe it's all the same family. Okay. Okay. Um, I looked it up at one point, but now it eludes me. Right. Um, so they have a program called Better Cities for Pets, where they want to make cities more pet friendly. Okay. And so I applied to the program. We were certified as a as a better city for pets. We were a pet friendly city. Nice. Um, which was great. And it allowed me to apply for a grant, which I have done through their foundation. Okay. I don't know if we've gotten it yet. Um, and that the grant that I applied for is around, um, we do mobile clinics where we take our van out into the community, okay. either to the tiny home village or La Luz. Uh. And for free, we give away vaccines, we microchip. Oh, great. It's amazing. It's a really, really cool so program. So what I like about that yeah. is that one of the barriers, like like pets are expensive. Mm-hmm. And whether you not want to, you know, oh, they're, they're so cheap, but they're not mm-hmm. because like the, the health care and the food. Right. But the value of having a pet and the actual happiness that right. comes from that mm-hmm. should be 
afforded to everybody. It should. So that's a really cool program that you go out and yeah. provide that service. Yeah. I mean, hopefully if we get the grant. Well, right. we do it anyway. I mean, okay. we're still doing it. The grant aside, mm. um, it's money that is well spent for us. Um, right. And it's been incredibly well received. So we do we do the free spay neuter clinic or the free um, vaccination clinics at the shelter mm -hmm. in a beautiful um, facility that we have a, um, a veterinary clinic there. And then we also the outreach is newer for us that we started okay. um, in April, okay. and uh, and that's been really well received. It's been harder a little harder in the summer just because it's hot. Mm. Um, Lalu's has a place where we can do it in the shade, right. and once the weather <clears throat> cools off, we'll continue and we'll can go do, back do more there. there. Yeah. And uh, about two weeks ago, I had Ryan Budlong from St. Francis Winery in here, and they are known for their blessing of the animals. And we're going to be a participant this year. We'll be there. Look at that. Yeah, that's next weekend. Yeah, you're going to have the van? Um, well, we, we'll have the van, but we probably... Um, Won't have tons of animals in it. Like no. Uh, sneaking them into people's when they're, yeah, no. <laughs> they're not looking. I always say it's a buy one, get one, um, <laughs> but it's not. Um, we will have puppies there, though. The van okay. will be there just as sort of an object, but we'll be on the lawn with everybody else. Oh, great. And we will have some puppies. Great. Yep. Um, so it seems that, you know, in current times, in contemporary times, it's very uh, trendy or on brand to adopt a shelter pet. Mm -hmm. For a long time, people were getting, you know, all their fancy dogs or mm -hmm. AKC things. But the, it swung back a little bit to, like, take a dog out of a shelter. Yep. Right. Is that trend still going? Is that is it still of a – are people still passionate about finding their forever pet there or is that going I back think, to all the doodles no i think it's both i mean there are people who really want the dog that they want they mm. want a, a doodle they want an australian shepherd they want a french bulldogs are very popular what's up with french bulldogs right now um i don't know they're, they're just, brachiophilic they're, they're cute like and <laughs> fun yeah they're yeah. cute and fun they're very playful oh. but they also come with um so you can you can kind of look down the line and see the dogs that will end up in shelters mm. Doodles um, are costly because you have to groom them. Um, they're not always the smartest. And they're very energetic. They like, are like very poodles energetic. Poodles are insane. Yeah. So you mix them with something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, generally, and I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination here, but it seems to me, and I've read this too, that mm -hmm. when you take you know, the poodle and the golden retriever or whatever it is and mix them, you don't always get the best of those breeds. Okay. And so... Um, you know, it, it runs the gamut. And then right. the French Bulldogs generally are, they're hard to breed because they, their heads are so big and Bulldogs do that they have they to, can't. a lot of times have C-sections. So it's not the they best. They have C-sections? Yeah. It's not the best. That's a thing? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I, they're very popular. Um, a lot of, like some dogs wait, so have. The so I, like the puppy's heads are so big they can't be right. born the normal way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they breed sort of abnormalities into these dogs, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some dogs, like like I said, doodles, you have to have them groomed. It's hard yes. to find a groomer. It's hard to afford a groomer. You can do it right. yourself. And Right. I mean, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. at all. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you do see these trends of the dogs coming through. Yeah. Um, you can sort of see it coming ahead. But generally, we just have your good old, what do we call them? Um like your your American American dog. your American like shelter dog. I've got I've got one of those. It do. Um, we we do call it the um, the garbage dog in the sense that when we lived overseas in like a developing country, this was the dog you'd see everywhere, and it could eat garbage and be fine with it. It's a brown dog. It's got the curly tail, uh -huh. and you know any any movie that's like in developing country, this is the dog. Oh really? And we have that dog. Okay. And he's great. He's like just the right size. Um, we, we got them through fostering and failing because we were three of them. Nice. So we were a foster family. We love that. We love the foster fails. Uh, that's how <laughs> we got, we have three cats the same way. Um, but I love that our dog is super hardy and easy to take care of because I think the hybrid vigor yeah. of just being this wild, crazy, yeah. weird dog. Um, What's his name? Gus. Gus. His initial name was Spinach Salad. Cause you know how you guys all have weird names for uh -huh. him? So we like Spinach Salad, Caesar Salad. And like strawberry salad, yeah, <laughs> were like their names. And like so, this litter of like nine of them, yeah. So I don't know what happened to like Jello salad and Snickers uh, salad, but yeah. So like, um, Gus is now, you know, we we take him out, we walk him. He's he's great. That's he's, awesome. He's he's a good dog. Yeah. He's not a well trained dog. I mean, that's my fault. Well, we have dog training. Do you? Yes, oh, we I should do. do that. Yeah, that's, that's a smart thing. Okay, so tell me what else does Pets Lifeline offer then? Um, all sorts of stuff. So we do. So spay neuter is spay neuter and vaccination Super clinics important. are sort of our like sort of our not really our tenant, but it's mm -hmm. a great thing we do for the community. Right. Um, helps with population control. Absolutely. 
people wouldn't have their their animals vaccinated if we didn't offer this for free. Mm. So people don't really feel that that it's necessary or important. Hmm. Um, but there are things. You know, I think rabies is bad. Rabies Can I is come very, on? Rabies is bad. I will be on the record. Yeah. Not a big fan. Not a fan. Rabies. Yeah. So we want to control okay. disease. Right. Um, spay neuter is important because first of all, there's the population aspect, but there's also like cancers and things that come to dogs oh. that aren't spayed and neuters. Right. Neutered. So. Oh. Super important there, okay. um, right? Um, our adoption program is huge. Uh, we invite the public in for adoptions. Um, Thursdays through Sundays, we're open. We're always open by appointment. If you mm -hmm. see a dog online that you want to come in and you can set up an appointment. Um, Thursday through Sunday, 11 to 4, we're open. Okay. Um, walk in. People walk in. Walk in. Okay. Yep. Um, see a dog. You can see all the kittens all the time. You go upstairs into our kitten rooms and play with the cats and the kittens. Um, let's see. We also have uh, a human education program. So that includes the dog training. Mm -hmm. It's our summer camp for kids, which is always okay. incredibly popular. After school programs, which we offer for free. We have one going oh. on right now. I think part of it is um, it's sort of fall. They're making masks and doing all sorts of stuff. Oh, right. I saw that. Okay. Yeah, super fun. Um, and again, we offer that for free. It's a four week session on okay. Wednesdays after school. There'll be another one after it in starting end of the October. Okay. okay. Um, we do holiday camps too. Coming up on um, October 12th, we have an open house called the Critter Carnival, mm -hmm. and our, we'll have our animals on display. Um, we'll have other animals coming in, we hope, mm -hmm. um, maybe some birds and some reptiles. We'll have treats like popcorn, cotton okay. candy, ice cream, things we're giving, our shaved ice we're giving away. and. Uh, all sorts of food truck will be there. It'll be fun. Oh, it's nice. just a fun activities and games and okay. pumpkin painting and so on and so forth. So that's um, fun. But then back to our programs, mm -hmm. um, as you said, so we, you know, pets are, our pets can be expensive. Sometimes you can't find a vet. So our mm -hmm. services are incredibly helpful to the public. And we also give away food, um, pet okay. food. We okay. have a pet food pantry that we stock and pay for. Um, we work with uh, Celeste Winder's Comida de los Todos. Okay. So she pulls a list for her people that need um, pet food. Mm -hmm. We give it to, I think we give it to La Luz. I think they get it, uh, get a, a like certain a distribution. Okay. Um, vintage house too. Okay. But you can just call us and say, hey, I'm out of, I'm out of dog food, I'm out of money. Right. Can you guys help me out? I'll help you out. Yeah, and you can come That's down and idea. get some stuff. Yeah. So it sounds like to me you are a nonprofit organization. You could probably accept donations. Of course. And my guess. We love donations. <laughs> And that's kind of a nice way to yeah. do stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, good to know. Um, here's my question. People can visit Cinema Valley. Mm -hmm. They can join a wine club. Can they also come here and adopt a pet from you if they don't live in Cinema Valley? They can. Okay, yes, good. Absolutely. So they can yep. come But we here. do that. Um, a lot of times it'll be somebody who's seen a pet on our website. Mm -hmm. So we adopt out our own uh, our own shelter animals, but we also have um, uh, people can post their own animal. I, let's say I could no longer take my pet, oh, I gotcha. but I didn't want to give it to the shelter. So mm -hmm. it's adoption by owner. Okay. So it's like selling your own car. Right. right? People right. come by and see it. So they'll keep the pet. Um, but we make it available through our website okay, and okay. then they can come to the shelter and meet it and do a meet and greet and, and stuff there. there. Well, that's but nice. yeah, um, we had an older gentleman from, I think he lived in Vallejo mm -hmm. and he, he was a senior mm -hmm. and he really want, he really wanted a dog and he wanted it to be a senior dog. He didn't want to get a puppy. Puppies are a lot of work. Well, besides that, he didn't want to, he didn't want to outlive his dog. Mm -hmm. He wanted an older dog so mm -hmm. that they could be together. And okay. if something happened to him, um, well, hopefully the dog would go first, but if right. not, and we made the agreement that if something happened to him, we would take the dog back. Okay. And he's got Dubby, and they are in love. Dubby's Aww. like this little, I don't know, chihuahua kind of mix oh, or something. Nice. Yeah, they love each other. It's really, really cute. The, our, the stories that we have are, like, we just had um, a dog called, we called him Pancakes, plural, because he looked like a stack of pancakes. He was a bulldog. Okay. Um, he was found outside of metric motors um kind of around the corner from okay. our one of the warehouses right. behind us um the owners came in or a worker came in in the morning and there was a crate outside with pancakes oh. and food and water in it and he'd been oh kind left. of given up been given up and so we got him and he he's been adopted oh, that's we great. went we go we will take the dogs to a lot of different adoption events or what we make into adoption events right there was a car show at the vets um okay. building right we took pancakes there. Guy was looking at cars. 
It's like, Fell in love with pancakes. Wait a minute. I need a dog for, yeah. my, for my Mustang. It's the greatest. It's really the That's greatest cool. thing. Yeah. Do you get people who come back, like success stories, and like they tell you how their dogs are doing? Like, yep. Do they follow up later? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we get pictures, um, oh. all sorts of stories about cats. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing. So here, when visitors come, they often are asking, like, where are places to bring their dogs? We do have a dog park uh, on First Street West, mm -hmm. a small dog park. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I believe another one at the regional park, mm -hmm. I think Ernie Smith, which is there off Arnold. Yes. Um, if we were going to become more dog friendly, mm -hmm. what, what kind of things could we institute for both for residents and visitors that, that would help with that? Well, I know the plaza is a hot button for dogs and nobody, <laughs> there's this big war between bringing Cancel, them in or... I, I forget that question. No, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, the plaza well, is, is a hot, hot spot. So, but people do, and I've, I've done this as well. Mm -hmm. I've always brought a dog with me to work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I've worked near the plaza a lot. Right. So I've walked around the plaza. The plaza is enormous that, you know, it's a big, so I feel like the, the, there's a gray area there where you right. can walk your dog around the plaza. You can be on the sidewalk with no problem. Right. I, I will fill people in the background. For a, for, a, for a time, there were two things that were hot button issues on the cinema plaza. Chickens being one during the great chicken fight of the plaza and two uh, dogs in the plaza mm -hmm. and, and the chickens are gone. They've gone on to the great cook oven in the sky. However, <laughs> the animals, um, uh, the, the pets, and specifically dogs, there was a guy who would write tickets oh. to some people. Because some people would uh, were not good dog owners. They, right. they would not pick up after the dog right. and just kids ring. But the idea is if you walk on the sidewalk around the plaza, on the sidewalk you're fine. Mm -hmm. In the plaza, it gets a little tricky, but during COVID they kind of let things relax. Yeah. And then people are like, okay, it's great. Dogs can be there. But as you said, during the farmer's market, you can't actually have dogs in the farmer's market usually because right. it's food, blah, blah, right. blah. Um, and at the visitor center, I will tell you, we do stock dog bags for mm -hmm. pickup because, you know, we're, we're realists here. And, yeah. and we just tell people, oh, you know, here's a good spot. But, right. you know, don't let your dog run wild in the park because there's a playground. And... Well, and they're ducks still, too. I mean, yeah, you can't. <laughs> there are ducks. Yeah. And ducks are mean. Ducks, Some are. Ducks can be mean. Depends on how you treat them. Yeah. But dogs also, you know, I wouldn't let my dog, even no. when I walked my dog around, right. um, he was always interested in the ducks. He was always leashed. Yes. But, you know, the poor ducks. It's their I know. Home. They got the eggs right there. They, they are, I won't tell you where, but they have a nest very close to the visitor center so that we can see it a lot. That's cute. Um, yeah. And, and you don't want to disturb them. No. Right? Because they, you know, they got to do their, their thing. Home. It's yeah. their own spot. But um, it's not like, you know, the ability to go visit other places with your dog Maybe some more trails or something like that. Or, yeah, yeah. Know. Or I mean, there are there are wineries that are dog friendly. Um, totally. Yeah, a lot are, right. and so you know that's always fun. I mean, a lot of people obviously come to wine taste. Right. So it's wonderful to be able to take your dog to play things like that. Right. Um, and I haven't really done a survey around the plaza about which are the dog friendly businesses, and I will well, get to that eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I but, bet you Wolf is. I'm sure Wolf is. <laughs> they sell dog treats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm sure some of the tasting rooms are. We've got right. the, the new cider place and all of that. I'm sure they would welcome your dog in there as they well. Probably. Most of them are fairly dog friendly. Yeah. Well-behaved dogs and well-behaved children, mm -hmm. both on leashes. Yeah. And I mean, the COVID, all the COVID, um, what were they called? The little, the parklets. You know, those those were dog friendly. I love the parklets. I did too. I was I very them. pro parklet. I know. You know, all these things happen. Yeah. Um, speaking of the plaza, do you want to help me do an ad? Sure. We're going to do an advertisement for the Cinema Plaza Tasting Pass. This is how it works. I'm going to give you this, and I'll also give you this just so you know about it. Okay. And then, essentially, we don't have a big budget here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you've done advertising and marketing. Uh, I have. And so, and you're able to do just, a, a, just, I just handed you some stuff. We're just going to do a quick read. Do you need to, can you, you, you can see that okay? Yeah. I gave you, okay. So, I'm just going to start a, a talking, yep. and then we're going to riff. Are you ready? Sure. Because this is not an ad at all. We're just, this is not an ad, but it's an ad. Here we go. Hey, Jody, I'm visiting Sonoma, and I'm looking for a cool tasting pass. Excellent. We have one. We can help you out. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you know the name of it? Sonoma Plaza. Sonoma Plaza Tasting Pass, Jim. Oh, that sounds great. Jody, I heard that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 tasting experiences to choose from. That's awesome. Um, and I get three of those 10. And you can buy this little tasting pass, and it's on your phone. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, and you have 24 hours from the time you first start 
until you need to finish it. Okay. So if you start like at four o'clock on a Tuesday, you have all of Wednesday to finish it. So do you just show you the show the code on your phone? Yes. You at just, the participating winery. So f one for example, Jody, you can go to Bedrock Wine Company. Oh, I love Bedrock. That's a good one, right? Yeah, so that is a good one. There. Um, or you could walk over to Caddis and talk mm -hmm. to Chris over there, right next to it. Woof. Yep. Um, and then they will activate your tasting pass, and you get a wine tasting flight. But I see that there's also Palm Cider Shop, so it's not just confined to wine. But wait, there's more. You're right, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Palm Cider Shop, say hi to Rick, and uh, and sometimes he has outdoor patios out there too. That's very and, cool. And enjoy it. So yeah, that's the Cinema Plaza Tasting Pass. I bet you can get it at cinemavalley.com. Oh, I bet you can. There you that's go. That's probably the best place. That also reminds me, cinemavalley.com is a visitor center where they have the dog bags. So if your dog does go to the bathroom, we'll give you some free bags. Nice. See, that's I it. Like that. You do really good at advertising. You. Good job. You pass. That was <laughs> a great you. read. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Um, did you ever think you were going to become a, a dog person when you were in your career? You're like, oh, one day I'm going to settle doing, not settle, but like I'm going to settle doing this. Like this is um, my next stuff. No, I really had no idea. What was Jody going to be when she was in New Jersey? Uh, no idea. Mm. When I was growing up, mm, yeah. no idea. Um, did you go to school to study like marketing or something like that? I like... went to Emerson College in Boston, okay. studied um, communications. Okay, well, so you're doing yeah. it right now. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I, I've understood everything you've said. Excellent. So I'm get such that a degree paid off. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to school in Boston. I did. Did you like it? I did. Why do they call it the hub of the universe? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. I've never heard that. Oh yeah, those Bostonians—they really think Boston's neat. It is pretty good, uh, and I am a Red Sox fan, die hard. What? Yes. Why? Because well, I was a Mets fan when I was a kid. Okay. And well, I mean, they... mostly I hate the Yankees. Oh, so well, that's one thing we there, can all yeah, agree if upon. If you hate the Yankees, then you're a Mets fan, and then you go to Boston. I mean, of all places. Isn't it weird be... when you meet people who are actual Yankees fans? I know a bunch. And I you're like, understand. what is? My mother is a Yankee fan. Oh, can you mind? I will stop my thought. It's hard. And I bet you she's a wonderful person. <laughs> 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 I have a couple friends who are Yankees fans. One who like grew up here. Oh. Like, what is wrong with you? I don't know that. Sean. I have another friend, Matt, who's from New York, and he's a Yankee fan. I'm like, well, I mean, and I get it. I get it. They're insufferable. Insufferable. They've been they've my whole life. So. But Boston's pretty cool. You Boston's like, great. You liked college there then. Loved it. There's like a quarter million college kids yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And you guys all um, row crew on the Charles River, and you get your coffee regular at Dunkies, and <laughs> that's what you do, right? Yeah, but they, uh, they do have that the crew race, the head of the Charles. It's yes. such a fun event. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, it was great. You didn't actually do crew, though, did you? I did not. Okay. No. Everything I know from Boston is just from Goodwill Hunting, basically. Oh, no. God. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and The Departed. Or which was that? <laughs> that's, that's all I know. No, I just, I just there's more to it. Um, all right, so you ended up doing the dogs and the cats. Mm -hmm. What could you? What advice can you give to people who are interested in adopting an animal? How do they prepare themselves? Because some people think, oh, it's just so simple to get a dog. Well, so if you're interested, we have really great people that work for us. Um, our cat behaviorist, Laura Anderson, is amazing. Um, she'll get you all set up with everything you need to know for your, your new... Cat behaviorist? Yes, that is what she is. She's an adoption specialist and cat behaviorist. So she knows hmm. more about cats than I could ever hope to know in my whole life. I'm a dog person, so cats are yeah. sort of... Um, no, cats are jerks. Well, cats are just very different for me. I, yeah. We have, a, we have a couple house cats. Mm. Or we'll have kittens. You, that, you do. You personally do. No, not me personally. Oh, you um, have them at, at the, the shelter. <laughs> yeah. So they're office cats. Yeah, they walk, they wander around. That's what um, I'm saying. They don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. And I don't understand a, an animal, a pet, that jumps on your desk and walks around. I mean, no. I've always had dogs. And no. They're down and here. Then, and then does this, puts its butt in your face. It's so weird. And you're like... Thank, hi. And on Hello. your keyboard. Yes. They're jerks. <laughs> it's just the way. And you know what? Cats don't meow to each other, but they meow at humans. Do I they? heard that. Yeah. Is that right? And mine meows this morning, four o'clock in the morning. Cloud was sitting there meowing at my daughter's door. I just get so mad with Cloud, every morning at four o'clock you do this. It drives me nuts. And How funny. And then they bring you decapitated mice. Oh, that would not make me happy. Well, I don't like I mean, mice in my garden. I know mice have to live, but yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I love cats. We've yeah. got three of them, um, but yeah. So you have a cat behavioralist. We also have a dog one. Her name is Rebecca Wallace. She's a, she was a dog trainer for us. Um, okay. We had a wonderful woman, Lorinda, um, who worked for us for years and years and years, and she's moved on. Um, she works at Totem, the vet now. Yeah. But between the two of them, they, there's so much 
knowledge about dogs and cats and animals mm -hmm. and how to best prepare yourself. And good. you get a little goodie bag when you adopt oh, about, nice. you know, with um, all sorts of stuff in it. And they're always available for questions and consultations. I mean, if you're having a cat that is meowing at your door at four in the morning and you'd like it to stop, you just have to stop in or call oh. and talk to Laura and she can give you tricks and tips. But Jody, I have tried swearing loudly. That has not worked. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean there's other options? I think so. <laughs> I think she could probably help you out. Can I still swear? Of course. Thank you. Um, and I love the cats. I know I, I, they're just loud at four in the morning. Yeah. Right? They're, they're good. Um, okay. Is there anything else people should know about, before we get to the next section here, about Pets Lifeline? For example, do you have a website? Oh, we do. Of course. PetsLifeline.org. Okay. And, is us. And I'm sure people can donate to your mission there as well. People can always donate. Um, okay. We love that. And they can also see what pets are available? Mm -hmm. okay. Either on the website, they can donate on the website, they can see the pets on the website, they can look at all our different programs and what we do and okay. sign up for things or apply if they want to adopt a dog. It starts with an application process online. Got it. It's all there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's important. Yeah. And especially for visitors to Cinema Valley, um, if you want to come up and look at some of the pets, maybe you live in Oakland, maybe you live like that gentleman in Vallejo, it gives you a chance to come up here, have a little nice time in Sonoma. Right. And then and then maybe bring home a pet. Yeah. The last time we did our open house um, was in last September, and we got some really great press on it. Um, our director at the time, Nancy King, who'd been there for 15 years, mm -hmm. she was featured on, uh, I don't know, some... Um, Eye on the Bay or something, mm. something mm -hmm. down in the city. And the people who were, I think it, they were other um, people who were going to be on the show, who mm. she met in the waiting room. Right. And they actually ended up coming to the adoption fair and adopting two kittens. <laughs> so she's in the green room. And right. she's like, yep. Yep. <laughs> Good for Nancy. Come on up. Yep. And they wow. came and adopted two cats. It was great. So yeah, you can, you can come from anywhere. I love that. Yeah. This is fantastic. Um, all right, Jody, how long have you lived in Sonoma again? Sheesh, 1993. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be ready for this. So, Jody, you might not know this, but we have two visitor centers. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have, you know, Facebook and the TikTok and, you know, people email us and they call us. They ask us questions. Mm -hmm. Jody, you're going to help us out in this segment called We, we get, get, get Questions. questions. <laughs> you haven't seen these, have you? No. No. These are actual questions that we get at the visitor center from this past week. So, ready? Oh, I can't wait. First one. Are the leaves in the vineyards pretty in fall? Yes, very pretty. Well, that's easy, right? Yeah. Very easy. They're very easy. But you're from New England, so... Well, and I have to say, yeah, when I first moved here, I thought it was a little bit of a jip that it wasn't <laughs> as folly as I was used to. <laughs> this isn't folly enough. <laughs> But over time, either either my either my standards have gone down, or I actually think some years are different. Some right. some years the vineyards are very spectacular mm -hmm. um, and very folly, mm -hmm. and other years I don't know if it's a water thing or a weather mm -hmm. thing or mm -hmm. what. But you know, but it, you you can definitely get your fall you your fix. fall. <laughs> What is it, the peepers, foliage peeping? Oh, yeah, the leaf peepers. Leaf peepers, that's right. That's right. And they went up They went up there to like Vermont, right? New Hampshire yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. they get L.L. Bean yeah. stuff and <laughs> apple cider. So, yes, our vineyard leaves do change. They are pretty. It is important to note to manage expectations. That that's if true. you are a New England leaf peeper with your cider and your apple fritter yeah. and your flannel, yeah. it will not be exactly the same as right. the hardwood deciduous forest of the Northeast. That's However... True. They're beautiful. And our trees do change here, but also our redwoods don't and a lot of our live oaks don't. Right. So you also have that the sort of juxtaposition of leaves that are changing and then green behind mm -hmm. it. Right. Some might even say it's better. Can be. Yeah. <laughs> I like that way. It's good. It works. It works totally well, plus, enough. then you get the. Um, you also get the. You get the when you get the cider smell back east. But mm -hmm. here we get the um, wine. You we know, do. harvest and crush and all of that. The that fermenting's going on. Yeah, different. Yeah. Different smell in the air. Okay. Well, staying staying with the uh, climate and, and stuff like that. Here's a question that we got from people who are often planning ahead, uh, looking at winter. This is from someone in the Midwest. What's the weather like in Sonoma in January? Well, we hope. It's gray and raining. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, no. It only rains at night in January, Jody. Okay. Right. Okay, try this again. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. So what's the weather like in, in Sonoma in January? Um, 
it's it's a mixed bag. You know, yeah. you could have a fifty, de- you know, a sixty five degree day. You could have a forty five degree day. Right. Um, but that's kind of any given day, right. here, really. Right. But you know, January is a great time to visit. It it's is. beautiful. It's um, less crowded. True. It's really nice. It's nice. Oh, okay, now you're back on point. However, you're right. It, it does rain in January, so it can rain. And you know why? We have wine caves for you. Oh, right. And we have uh, wineries with fireplaces. Yes, cozy. It's the best. It is the best. And the rainstorms do come in off the Pacific. They're usually about three days. You might get a big storm and then it's gone again. And what we do hope is you get one for a week, you dry out for two or three Mm -hmm. weeks, and another one comes. And we have actually passed a law that it can only rain from 11 (laughs) p.m. to 5 (laughs) a.m. So other than that, it's nice. But yeah, come visit. It never... I've never seen... A hard freeze here. No, it, sometimes in January we're barbecuing in our flip flops. That is pretty fun. I mean, that's right. Especially if the Niners are doing okay. Yeah. If they're not doing okay, very sad. Very but if sad. But if it's a good day, then we're going for it. Okay. Here's one just for you. Mm. Okay, this is on Facebook. We need recommendations for dog friendly breakfast, brunch, or bakery spots, preferably with nice outdoor seating. Okay, let's see. Um,. Well, we no longer have Monday Bakery, but that was a great place in their patio in the back. But the coffee shop's coming in, and they might have yep, the same thing. I'm sure. So. Um, Pete's, we like to go to Pete's and get a Pete's coffee. Good spot. And we sit yeah. outside in, in front of William Sonoma, kind of like. On the secret chairs. Yeah. So, okay, here's the plan. Remember the chairs. Yeah. If we all spill coffee on them, <laughs> they'll have to sell them at a discount. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all doing our part, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Those but are that's a great chairs. place. Yeah. Um, also, what is it called at MacArthur Place? I don't know if oh, we have the, a name the porch. for that. Yeah, the porch. Yeah. That's a great place. Um, and it's dog friendly. Absolutely. Super dog friendly. Yeah. It's awesome to go to. The new um, coffee shop, Svalbard or something. Schmastad. I don't, is that what it is? S M A S T A D. Okay. Across from the high school. Yeah. Yeah. I'm They're probably. awesome. Yeah. Um, it was good. Dog friendly, uh, great family, great coffee. Good pastries. So, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't had a pastry. Great I went pastries. right when they first opened okay. and then I went on vacation and it's been some time. It's a good spot. So, yeah, that's a really good spot. Um, and then in the springs, um, I'm not so well acquainted with that, but I think Creekside Cafe used to be able to take dogs there, yeah, okay. if I remember correctly. And, you know, I don't go out for breakfast that much. I yeah. go for coffee. Okay. I think Sonoma Eats, you can't probably bring your dog inside, but if you keep your dog outside of the mm-hmm. patio, they do have great breakfast burritos. And then Haley's making really good pastries there. Oh, so yummy. that's where Barking Dog used to be, right. ironically. Oh, that's the same name. Um, and then um, there are probably more spots for breakfast, but that's that's a good, mm-hmm. that's a good, okay, good job. You're yeah, good. there's also, what's in Glen Ellen? Um, Le Pascal? That um, place is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you can sit outside with a the pet there. Yeah. But then there's also, what's the other one? Um, in the village. In the, oh, the oh Garden, Garden Court, Court Cafe. Yeah. Okay. They good. don't have outdoor seating, but that's an amazing place for breakfast. That is a good spot. Yeah. So you can good answer. Leave your dog in the car. That's right. <laughs> Windows down. Yes. Or whatever. In the shade. <laughs> um, okay, here's one. We are staying in Sonoma. Where should we visit for nightlife, live music, and cocktails? Mm, okay. Um, what is it called? Used to be the Blue Moon Saloon. I it's on Speak the tip of my t- no, the other one on the corner. Oh, is it currently Bucks? No, Bucks is great. Um, is it currently called Bucks still? Yes. No, Bucks is where um, oh, no. the Swiss has yeah, a new name. Used to be right. No, I'm talking about oh. the, it's blue. It's on the end of West Spain. What's that? Oh, oh, Starling. That's it. How can I not remember that for heaven's sakes? <laughs> Great cocktails there. Great cocktails. Yep. Starling bar. Yep. Um, that would be super fun. They, they do a lot of live music. Yep. Speakeasy is amazing for live Speakeasy, music. Speakeasy, good for live music. Sure. On the plaza, yep. Um, Hot Monk's always great. Hot Monk's hopping in. Yeah. Yep. Um, also cocktails, The Beacon, which oh, is above Beacon, town yeah. family outpost. It's a speakeasy. It's not the speakeasy, but it's a speakeasy style. Yeah. Up the back stairs there. That's super um, cool, Beacon. Most of the actually, like MacArthur has great cocktails at their bar there. Fairmont will have good cocktails. Um, live music also. There's a lot in different places, like KSVY, if you're watching the yep. uh, podcast here on, on YouTube. Uh, they often will talk about all the live music that's at like the different bars mm-hmm. and like the Spaciani Theater has yeah. music. Glen Ellen has music on mm-hmm. Thursdays seasonally. Yep. Um, a Tuesday night market. So yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. Yeah. I, I like how I said nightlife though. You, your eyes went up because we're not really known for hopping like crazy nightlife. No. Right. We're known for like small wine country nightlife. Yeah. Yeah. You have to seek it out, but it's always it's, it's quality nightlife. Oh, I like the way you put it. Yeah, there you go. It's quality, quality over quantity. It's quality over quantity. Yeah. Um, okay, here's the final question. Hey, we're traveling to Sonoma soon, and we can't decide on a place to stay. So many that would be convenient for both a visit to Sonoma and Napa wineries. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 
MacArthur Place is great. Yeah. Uh, Lodge, Lodge, I'd say. Yeah. Anything on the plaza, Ledson Hotel, yep. any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think I, I totally agree. In the town of Sonoma, very easy to get over to Napa mm-hmm. and also up into Sonoma and Sonoma Valley. Um, also the best Western Sonoma Valley Inn. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, which might be changing its name soon. Oh, Listen really? Up. Oh, interesting. Um, and the Inn at Sonoma. Um, uh, uh, Sonoma bungalows, if you want like a vacation rental style, neat yep. little thing right there. Um, there are a lot of choices, a lot of vacation rentals. So city, in the city of Sonoma, you can do it. As you get further up Valley, uh, Glen Ellen, Kenwood, uh, you could stay up there. They're great places to stay, like the Gage House or the right. Kenwood and Spa. But getting over to Napa, you usually have to come down or white knuckle it over yeah. the hill. Yeah, so, you could do that. Um, some that's, people. That's always fun. Yeah, Trinley Road. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a very windy road. Uh, it can be very scenic. It's great. It takes a long time. It does take a long time, and don't take somebody who's car sick. Right, and I even tell people if you're gonna try to do that, just go even further up, like yeah. through the Santa Rosa and back into Calistoga. That's less windy than yeah. Trinity, which yeah. is nuts. Um, but yeah, so stay mainly stay in southern part of Sonoma Valley. Yeah. If you're trying to go to Napa, mm-hmm. but you don't have to go. You can just hang out here. Just totally hang out. I mean, there's a neat spot here, right? Yeah, we have dogs spot. and cats and dogs and cats, puppies and big plaza, big plaza and stuff like that. Um, Jody, that was simple, right? That it's was totally easy. Simple. Yep. I told you this podcast is like super easy. It is low key. Um, are there any other questions that you wanted to make up and make me answer? No, okay. I'm good. Did I already talk about the new hats at the visitor center? Talked about the hat. Okay. Is there anything else I forgot to talk about? You think? I don't think so. Okay. The most important thing is the website for Pets Lifeline is what? Uh, petslifeline. I guess it's org. <laughs> this is why I have to write everything I down. Know. I think it is petslifeline. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you just Google pets lifeline. I, it'll 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 appear right there. Hold on, pets life line. I don't know. Ready? This. I I typed in pets life lib and even figured it out. And it and ready? I'm not on the thing. Yeah, petslifeline. Yeah, figured. We're there. I bet you the other one works too. I already said .org, so thank God. Oh, phew. Don't have to fix it. So, if you folks, if you're listening and you want to learn more about how to support um, the animals, or in addition to that, if you're looking to adopt a cat or a dog or a, do you have iguanas? No, we have two in-house chameleons, but they're not up for adoption. Uh, and you wouldn't even find them because they're chameleons. So, if you're looking <laughs> to adopt a cat or a dog or a puppy or a kitten, uh, go to petslifeline.org. Jody. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been great. And after you're going done going to PetsLifeLine.org, go to CinemaValley.com for deals, special offers, and events. If you've listened this long, have you rated this podcast yet? Oh, my gosh. Why don't you give us 25 stars on whatever platform you're listening to? Larry, thanks for listening. Mom and Dad, glad you made it back safely. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.